Safira, after working for the UN for 10 years, what did you see that gives you hope about the future of humanity? Yeah, so I worked at the United Nations headquarters in New York for 10 years. And, you know, it's such a diverse place. You have 193 member states. You have a lot of UN agencies and UN staff. You also have a lot of civil society actors um, who engage there. And so a lot of people really coming together to think about the well-being of humanity. And so something that really gives me a lot of hope is the vision and the collective vision that all of these entities and people have come together to really envision the future of, of a world. And they've come up with what's called the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is a set of 17 goals that the world hopes to achieve by the year 2030. And, you know, just being in that environment where people deeply care, deeply see kind of what's going on in the world and its current condition, but who have deep hope that they can envision something better and envision a peaceful and prosperous life for everybody. I think also what reinforces my hope is seeing the simultaneous efforts at the grassroots. And so one example of that is the efforts of the Baha'i community, which in over 180 countries around the world are engaged in a process of building capacity. Um, they're working with children, with young adults, with youth, really in a, in a range of social action initiatives, um, but also within a community development process that is aiming to empower local populations to take charge of their own development and work to build a better world for others. So it's, it's a process that's really open to anybody and everybody who wants to be a part of making change. Um, so really to see kind of this vision being created at the international level of a better world and the simultaneous grassroots swell of people from all corners of the world working to build change from the bottom up. It's this kind of merging and meeting together of vision and action. And that gives me a lot of hope for the future of humanity. A beautiful story that I find really touching is actually a story in Vanuatu, one of the Pacific islands, where a group of young people who are like 12, 13 years old, observed their environment and noticed that their reef was starting to die. Every time they went out to fish, um, they were catching less and less and they had to kind of go further and further out into the ocean to be able to catch, catch fish. And so they decided to restore their own reef. The adults weren't doing it. You know, the chiefs of their tribe weren't doing it. So it was the young people that really led the way. And so they corded off um, a particular area that they identified as being a fish rookery or a, a nursery where young fish come and, and take shelter. And it's that in that area that they grow and mature. So the young people really led these efforts to educate their community, to explain why, please don't fish in this area. And over a relatively short period of time, they started to see the fish come back. They started to see their marine ecosystem really develop. And this was remarkable. This really blew their community away. They were so proud of their young people for their leadership that it started to serve as a model for other parts of the island um, who wanted to also see similar results and, and really nurture their own reef. So that story to me is really moving because it was change that was initiated by our young. And I think sometimes we underestimate the power of our young people. You know, we put them in school and say, okay, now your job right now is just to learn. You're not really contributing to society. You can do that once you graduate. But actually young people, even though they're learning and they're in school and they're maturing and developing also have a lot of innate capacities to be able to give to the world. They see things with fresh eyes. They come up with these new ideas. And I think when we give space, and this is such a beautiful example of when young people are given the space to lead, to consult with their community, to come up with the, these ideas and to see them through with the backing of the community, they can lead to some really profound changes. Yeah. Can you, speak to the idea that humanity is in a state of transition? So at every moment in history, 
humanity has had different challenges, it's had different capacities, and we see that when we look at the history of the world. Um, and so from the vantage point of the United Nations, which is an institution that was really constructed to ensure that the world never sees the horrors of war again. That was the initial impetus. And so, you know, you kind of, you know, back in the early 1900s, um, humanity has gone through a lot. We've gone through two major world wars. We've come to a place where we have said never again, and we've created this institution of the United Nations as a place where countries and, and diverse peoples can come together to consult to really try to seek understanding with each other instead of resorting to conflict and war. Um, but we still see the limitations of that. And our world is not a world yet where we have peace everywhere. And sometimes I think we feel like we have peace or we've achieved a certain level of maturity, but then again, conflict arises. Conflict pops its head up in, you know, places where it's happened in the past, it raises its head again. In parts of the world where we never expect there to be conflict, we now see conflict. Um, we see in countries, you know, a real increase in polarization, in othering. We're still grappling with what humanity's relationship is with the environment, um, between women and men, between young and old. So there are still many areas where you could say humanity is trying to develop its capacities. And we're seeing almost the fits and starts of a world civilization that's trying to come of age. We're trying to find ourselves. There are aspects that have been tremendously advanced. We are in an age of the internet, there's AI, there's airplanes that transport us from one end of the world to the other. So technologically, our material developments in certain parts of the world has really strengthened. Um, I think humanity is really in a stage of transition towards a place of maturity where there is justice, where there is equality, where anyone who's born in any part of the world in the future will have the opportunity to fully develop their talents and realize a meaningful contribution to the world, where they will have access to technology, where they can live a safe life, um, so we're moving in that direction and I, I, I am very hopeful for that. I do feel in the last century, particularly the development and growth of humanity has really been exponential. And I really feel like that's only going to increase. Um, I do think in the same way that, you know, a child learns how to walk it, you know, stumbles and falls in the beginning it's it puts one foot after the other and it falls but it continues to pick itself up and i think you know we've we've gone past that stage we've moved through the phase of childhood and we're now at a stage of collective adolescence you could say where these new capacities have really come to the fore but we're not yet sure how to use them and when humanity gets to this place of, of a real maturity, I think that's when we'll see a flourishing of collective capacity um, and even further flourishing of technology, but also of the arts and of very different ways of living and very different ways of constructing our society um, to prioritize different things, um, to really be much more collaborative with each other to really nurture human well-being and human nobility. And I'm hoping that that time is going to find us pretty soon. What work have you done that you're most proud of? But work that I'm the most proud of has been moments where I have, in whatever small way, been able to make a contribution to consensus building. And I, I feel like being able to create an environment where people can come together and share, consult, deeply understand each other, decide on a course of action together and together collectively get up and do whatever they have decided to do, um, really manifests in something that is even better than I personally individually would have conceived. 
And I think the joy that is created, the confidence that comes from working in such a way, the encouragement that comes from working in such a way feels very powerful. It feels very empowering, I should say. Um, so I think work that one can take pride in is work that brings people together and empowers each other to realize the emergent powers of a collective. And I think that's something the more and more we can do that and develop, I'm really developing still my capacities in that area. But the more of us that can do that, that can bring people together, especially diverse peoples and build consensus and work together. Um, I think it's something for everybody to really rejoice and celebrate it.